Nehemiah chapter 6, and just for the sake of time, I'm going to read three verses. The Bible said, Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. Verse number 3 is where I want to focus my text. Nehemiah said, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Brother Clint Ruby, you lead us in prayer if you don't mind. Uh, give us a touch just physically and spiritually sure thank you brother Clint I want to preach to you tonight with this thought in mind on some reasons that I cannot come down on some reasons that I cannot come down. This book uh, records and gives us the, the record of a small remnant of poor Jews that had come back after the Babylonian captivity to their homeland. Well, there's a lot going on over in Israel today. Well, I believe our redemption draweth nigh. I believe that with all my heart. I hope America don't turn our back on Israel. The Bible said in Psalms 122, verse number 6, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for they shall prosper that pray for thee. And boy, we better not turn our back on Israel. And listen, 12 years, Nehemiah was the governor over Judah under order Xes, the king of Persia. And I like what uh, verse number 2 said. It said that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me mischief. One man said, you better say no to Ono. Yeah, right. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, right. You better say no to Ono. Yeah, it's always the enemies of God and the enemies of God's people, Brother Doug, to try to get you down. Right. And Nehemiah was the third great leader under the Jews' restoration. Zerubbabel led the first group of exiles back to Jerusalem, amen, around 538 B.C. Then in Ezra chapter number 2, about 80 years later, Ezra, uh, the scribe, brought another remnant to Jerusalem. But it would be 13 years later that God burdened the heart of Nehemiah about the conditions of Jerusalem. Now I want to say this. Nehemiah's prayer life enabled him to weather the storm in spite of opposition. Amen? His prayer life, there's power in prayer. Now I've learned this, Brother Bob, there's three kinds of people in this world. Number one, there's people, amen, that don't even know what's happening. You, you wouldn't believe, I mean, the people in this world today that, hey, they, they look at the Holy Land over there and they think maybe it's just another war. I told Brother Rod uh, out there in the foyer, and I told him, I said, listen, I said, Israel don't need the United States' help. I said, hey, 1967, Syria tried to overcome them and they whooped them in six days, amen. Hey, they don't need our help. We need their help, amen. There's people that don't know, hey, that the Lord is getting ready to come. He's getting ready to come. The trumpet is getting ready to sound. Hey, the next thing on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. Revelation chapter 4, hey, the church is going to be caught up. And you don't find nothing about the church on over till about chapter number 19, amen. Hey, we're going to be absent from the body and we're going to be present with the Lord, amen. There's those who don't know what's happening. Then there's people that watch what's happening. Amen. There's people who watch what's happening. Amen. Then another man said this. There are those, thank God, that make things happen. Amen. Thank God for people that make things happen. Three things I'm going to give you tonight with the help of the Holy Ghost on why I'm not coming down 
off of the wall. Number one, I'm not going to come down because of the enemies of God. Look at verse number one of chapter six. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I'd not set up the doors of the gate. Now I'm going to say this to you, friend, that the enemies of God do not want the work to go on. Right. Amen. The enemies of God, they don't want God's work to prosper. Matter of fact, turn back to chapter number four. Turn back to chapter four. We'll read a few verses here. Chapter four, verse one. But it came to pass that when Sanballat had heard we builded the wall, he was wroth, or in other words, he was mad, and took great indignation, and mocked the Jews, and he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria, and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones of the heaps out of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go upon it, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. They were mocking the people of God. He said, Hear, verse 4, O God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity. Let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Verse 6, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto half thereof, for by the people, for the people had a mind to work. Amen. I want to say this to you, friend. And boy, I heard you preacher this morning, hey, talking about uh, the church and talking about a building. Amen. I'm going to tell you, if you're going to do something, you got to have a people that has a mind to work. Amen. These people didn't want God's work uh, to prosper. Look at verse 7 and 8. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah uh, and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, that they, uh, the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth, for they were mad, and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem to hinder it. Do you know anybody tonight that's trying to hinder the work of God? Hey Amen, I'm going to tell you what, the devil don't like this church, I promise you that. Now I'm going to tell you, if you're a Christian tonight, if you've been born again and the Holy Spirit lives in your heart, I'm going to tell you you have an adversary. Yes. Peter put it like this in 1 Peter 5, 8. He said, be sober, be vigilant, yes. because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, friend, the devil's on, he's on your trail. Yes. He wants to try to get you discouraged. Right. He wants to try to get you out of church. Amen. He wants you to try to be at each other's throats. Amen. Hey, he wants you to get upset at your pastor. Somebody say amen. That's the way the devil works. He, I hate the dirty devil. Somebody say amen. Listen, the devil and the enemies of God, they don't want God's work to prosper. Now, I want to say this. The enemies most of the time fight against the leaders. Amen. Look at chapter 6. And look at verse number one. Notice the personal pronouns here. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I builded the wall. Notice that, amen. Look at verse number two. He said, but they, the latter part, but they thought to do me mischief, amen. Look at verse number four. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. You know who the devil's going to fight, Brother Doug? You're praying about building the church. You know who the devil's going to fight the most? He's going to fight your leader. Now the Bible gives us three names here. And I marked it right here in my Bible, amen. I'm going to tell you what, uh, these were an unholy trinity. <laughs> they were trying to hinder the work of God, and Brother Bob, they were trying to do it, Brother Peter, through the man of God. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. And I'm going to tell you, you need to pray for your pastor, and I'm not telling you nothing you don't already know. You need to pray for your pastor. You don't know what kind of burden he's under. Right. One man said, 
I've said this many times here. He said, listen, he said, the slowest form of suicide is pastoring a Baptist church. <laughs> when I was growing up, I wanted to be a disc jockey. That was what I aspired to do. I wanted to be a DJ. That's what I wanted to do all my life. I mean, that's what I wanted to do. Got out of high school, going about my own way, doing my own thing. But guess what? I had a friend, and his name was Don Hudson. He invited me to church, Brother Doug, and the first preacher I ever heard uh, that I ever heard with a touch of God on him was Brother Roy Goodson. He had that old crooked finger, and he'd, he'd preach, and he'd point that old crooked finger, and he'd preach one night, amen, Brother Thad, Miss Tammy, on Are You Looking Good? Now, I'm going to tell you, I wasn't looking good. Boy, I fell under conviction while he was preaching. I couldn't wait to get outside, and back then I smoked. I mean, boy, I, I couldn't wait to get in my car and get one of them Salem lights. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I remember my daddy told me, Brother Thad, he told me, he said, son, if I ever catch you smoking, you'll be smoking out both ends. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Jordan, that's what he told me. I'm just telling you what. You just have to know my daddy. If he told you something, he'd done it. Mama, mama lied to us. She told you she's going to whoop you. You knew you wasn't going to get a whooping. Daddy tell you one time, you it was going to happen. Amen. Uh, but I got under conviction, fell under conviction. And conviction is a good place to be in and it's a bad place to be in. I went to the hospital. I got under conviction and went to the hospital as a 22-year-old boy. Thought something was wrong with my heart. And there was spiritually, but I didn't know that because I wasn't brought up in church. Went to the merchant room, Brother Doug, and they checked my heart and done an EKG, done everything. Said, boy, your heart's all right. Well, then I guess they thought it was my nerve. They gave me some nerve pills. Sent me home that night, took him nerve pills. Boy, I'm glad God's long-suffering. Amen. Yeah. Miss Kathy, I woke up the next morning, Brother Randy, and guess who come knocking at my door? The sweet Holy Ghost. Yeah. He wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah. He, he was knocking. People were praying. Somebody was calling on God, Brother Clint. He was knocking at my heart's door. And finally, boy, I got tired of it, and I said, boy, if I need to get saved, I'm going to get saved. I called old Don Hudson over my house that night around the table. Mom and Daddy and all was there, and, you know, I had the ego, amen. You know what somebody said about ego, what that means? It means edging God out. If you got an ego, edging God out. That's what an ego is. And boy, I had an ego, Brother Doug, and I didn't want to talk about God around my family because none of my family knew a whole lot about God. But old Don come over at night. It's on a Wednesday night, pouring down rain. We sat around there and done the small talk. And then, boy, he looked at his watch. He said, church starts at 730. And it was about this time, about 10 to 7. He said, I've got to go to church. And I'll tell you, Brother Christian, he got up to go out the door with his Bible. And, boy, he had a, a 1982 Toyota Celica, brand new. I mean, it's a beautiful little old car, five-speed. You can't beat a Toyota. Somebody say amen. And, uh, boy, I went out the car, and he done had his Bible turned to Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, where that verse says this, amen. He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He'd been praying for me for three years. Amen. My grandma in Georgia had been praying for me. My daddy's mother down in Everton, Georgia. Hey, my grandmother that helped raise me, Nene. Boy, I used to sleep in the bed with my grandma, and she would make them real banana puddings, amen, with meringue on top. And son I loved her and she raised us and boy I'll tell you uh, she was praying for me amen now I got out there and he said Greg you want to be saved boy tears running down my eyes I said yeah Don I want to be saved and daddy so produce out in an old garage behind the house uh, he said you want to get saved here in the car I said if it's alright with you I said let's go down the garage I want to get on my knees and I, I want to get saved Boy, I confessed every sin I knew I'd uh, done. Amen, Brother Phil, something I hadn't done. I, I mean, I, I confessed, amen, Christian, everything I could. And I'm glad when I called upon him, he came into me. I went down a sinner, an old drunk, an old pothead. But I'm glad, Thad, when I came up, thank God, I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a uh, new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things come new. Amen. Amen. People couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Amen. And boys, I run red. Guess what happened? Amen. I had to give me a whole new set of friends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 
One man said, if you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Hey, man, I had to get a whole new set of friends. I had to quit running with that drinking crowd and that smoking crowd and that pool hall crowd. Friend, I got in church and hey, it wasn't, didn't mean that I was better than nobody else, Brother Peter, Brother Doug, but I tell you, I got in church. Boy, the preacher said, you want to be the Sunday school superintendent? And I said, what's that? <laughs> I just glad I wasn't going to hell, amen. I said, I'll do whatever you want me to do, preacher. Get up, read scripture, open up, dismiss, and everybody go to Sunday school. We got in church and started living for God. And I was dating uh, uh, my wife at the time. She was my girlfriend then before we before I got saved. She said, I'm not going to marry a drunk. We were supposed to get married in September of 82. And she said, I'm not marrying a drunk. And boy, I'll tell you, that, that was a blessing. We'd have never stayed married. Amen. Then in December the 15th, 1982, about 15 minutes after 7 on 113 Pumpkin Town Highway, I got born again. Yeah. said, Preacher, how can you be so precise? I was there when it happened. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hey, I called on him. I was there. Friend, I came up and God saved me. And boy, that next year, September the 3rd, 1983, we got married, been married 40 years this past year and been together ever since. Amen. Amen. I want to say this to you. The enemies of God don't want the work to prevail, amen. Right. And notice what helps Nehemiah. Notice what helps him prevail over his enemies. Chapter 6, look at verse number 9. Chapter 6 and verse number 9. He said, For they all made us afraid, saying their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it not be done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Yeah. You know what helped him, amen, overcome his enemies, brother Christian, brother Doug, was his prayer life. Yeah, good. There's power in prayer. Yeah, yeah. James 5:16, he said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, what? Availeth much. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, the Bible says what? To pray without ceasing. Luke chapter 18 and verse number one, he said, men ought to always pray and what? Yeah. Not to faint. Amen. We need to pray more. And boy, get the enemies of God off our back. Amen. Right here we see this, that boy, Nehemiah, he prayed, and, and boy, I mean, got, he got God's will accomplished. The work of God was accomplished in 52 days. Amen. Look down at verse number 15 in chapter 6. He said, So the wall was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month, E. E. Law, in 52 days. What been laying waste for years and years. But you know what? The people, Brother Ray, had a mind to work. And boy, God touched Nehemiah's heart, Brother Doug. And guess what? Hey, the wall got built, amen. And let me just say this. The wall got built in spite of opposition. You better be careful, amen, about who you put your hands on. Amen. Well, I mean, I've always been taught, and the Scripture bears it out, amen, hey, that you're not to try to uh, run your man of God. You're not to put your hands on the man of God. Right, right. Amen. Yeah. There's people that have no respect for the preacher. There's people, amen, that disrespect the pastor, amen. Hey, you know you've got a good pastor. You know that. You've got a good man of God, and you better keep your hands off of him. Right. Amen. Amen. We better be careful about opposing, hey, God's work and God's workers. The reasons I can't come down, hey, because of the enemies of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad the Lord will take care of us. Yeah. And boy, David said there in Psalms 23, he said the Lord spreadeth the table right there before his enemies. Amen. Yeah. It makes the devil mad when God starts feeding you bread from heaven. Yeah. Amen. That man in Exodus 16, hey, it started coming down from heaven. Amen. And it makes the enemies of God. God always takes care of his own. Yeah. In Psalm 78, they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? The children of Israel wandered around nearly 40 years. Hey, God took care of them. Amen. He provided for them for nearly 40 years. Amen. Yeah. If he can do that for them, he can do that for us. The reason I can't come down is because the enemies of God. I want to say this. Another reason I can't come down is because it's a great work. Look at verse number 3, chapter 6. He said, And I sent messengers unto them, 
saying I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Somebody said, well, I thought the greatest work in the world that uh, Amazon's building all these buildings over here. We come across, amen, and uh, my wife seen that uh, Covington Airport. I said, that's probably Amazon's own personal airport. Somebody say amen. That's their own personal airport. Yeah. Amen. Somebody said, I thought that's the greatest work working at Michelin or working on my job or doing what I'm doing. No, that's not the greatest work. Right. I'm going to tell you, Brother Clint, the greatest work Brother Rod is, is right here tonight is where we're at tonight. The greatest work, Brother Ray, is the work of God. Whether you know it or not, you need the church. We need the church, amen? Hey, it's a great work. God's work is the greatest work in all the world. You know why? Because souls are saved. Hey, friend, I got born again because I went to church got under conviction, heard the word of God, amen, and Brother Christian got saved by the grace of God. God wrote my name down in the Lamb's book of life, Brother Doug, and I got saved because somebody invited me to church. Let me just see a show of hands. How many of you here tonight got saved in a church, amen, got saved in a church? Look around. I mean, probably 70, 75% of the congregation got saved in a church. You think it's important? You're not going to hell tonight. Hey Amen, I'm not going to hell. I deserve to go to hell, but I'm glad I'm not going to hell. You know why? Because of the church. I mean, listen, hey, we used to live on Shady Grove Road, and there used to be an old small Dodge van. It was puke green. I mean, it was ugly. It was puke green, hey amen. And boy, about every Saturday or every other Saturday, Brother Doug, they'd come up our driveway, and they'd come up and try and invite us to church. They'd bring little bitty Bibles and little New Testaments, say, man, they'd bring those tracts. He was talking about those tracts. Uh, uh, preacher Tommy Hayes, he was my pastor. Boy, good man of God, he's already in heaven. But he said this, he said, those tracts will track you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I seen his daddy, Riley Hayes, was out there at the jockey lot up there in Pickens. They got two big old jockey lots, and right in the middle is a little old small gate, those jockey lots. And Riley was in his 80s, and he was out there handing out those little promise books of the Bible, them little red books, promises of the Bible. And I sat back, Brother Phil, Brother Thad, and I was just watching him. And he's handing them out, Brother Doug, when he's handing them out, people would look at them and they'd throw them in the trash can. I just sat back and just watched it. You know what I'm saying? Just observing things. I was a young Christian and I'd see people, they'd throw them on the ground, stomp on them and everything else. And boy, when he got through, it was about an hour or so, Brother Bob, when he got through, I went over and, and Tommy looked just like his daddy, Riley. He had white hair, boy, I mean the prettiest white hair. And I said, Brother Riley, I said, I've been watching you, Christian. I said, I've been watching you. I said, you've been painting out them books. And I said, these people throw them in the trash can. He was paying for them books. He didn't get them for free. They, he was paying for them. I said, people throwing them down, stomping them on the ground. He looked at me. He said, young man, he said, all my responsibility is to put it in their hand. That's what he told me, Brother Doug. You know what our job is? To give out the word of God. Jesus said, I have given them thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Our job is to give out the word of God. You don't come to church to play around. Right. Hey, the church, amen, is not an entertainment business. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. We don't come to church, uh, friend, uh, you know, to look and see who's here, who's not here. Hey, we come here to get help. Yeah. We come here so sinners can be saved. Yeah. We come here so people can be built up. Yeah. And I promise you, the enemy don't like that. Right. The enemy's going to try to throw a wrench, amen, Brother Doug, in what you're trying to do. Right. He'd been telling me, he'd been praying about, uh, about what to do. He said something about that land this morning. I'll tell you what, there was a little something went off in my heart. <laughs> Let me tell you, friend, God ain't broke. Right. He made this world in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Right. Somebody say amen. Yeah. amen. God ain't broke. Right. He, can, he can do that. If it's God's will, it'll be done. Amen? I'll tell you, it won't be done without hindrance. It won't be done without enemies. Amen? There's a work that needs to be done. Turn to chapter number 2, Nehemiah chapter number 2, 
And look at verse number 17. Nehemiah 2, look at verse 17. Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. And I want to say amen and amen to that. Nahum 1 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trusteth in him. Amen. I'm going to tell you, we serve a good God, friend. Amen. The Bible said, verse 18, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, is also the king's word that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sanballat, the Hornonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? Hey, they weren't rebelling against the king. They were doing what God wanted them to do. Then answered I, verse 20, I, Then answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we as servants will rise, arise and build, but ye have no position, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Right. You know what? If God wants Emmanuel Baptist Church to have a new church, if he wants you to have, what, 17, 18 acres, was it on the right coming in? We, I looked at it coming coming over I'm going to tell you what, if God wants you to have that, you're going to have it. You say, you're crazy. We got a big God, friend. Hey, he paid my way three years through Bible college. Didn't cost me a dime. She brought my, also bought my Pepsi's and my cheese crackers. <laughs> she bought my gas, too. She bought my gas. God just used her, amen. She was a conduit that God used. And listen, hey, God's got people in his house, amen. Hey, he can use, hey, God can even use lost people. Sure. Right. Right. Amen. He can even use lost people. There's a work that needs to be done. This church, amen, listen. Hey, you, you need the room. I mean, it was about full this morning. And I'll tell you, I told Brother Ray, I looked around tonight, people kept coming in, Brother Bob. I said, man, there's a good crowd back for Sunday night. You need the room. You can't grow without room. Right. Got a beautiful church building. But I'll tell you what, God, Brother Clint, Brother Rod, he can provide the property and the ground for another church building. Right. I've heard people before and be so foolish, boy, I, I don't want to leave here. And they worship this property or worship this building. Amen. Hey, God can give you a new ground and a new building. Amen. Hey, you don't want the church to be stagnant. You want it to grow, and you want it to prosper. Amen. That's what God wants. He wants for people to be saved. Somebody say amen. There's, listen, there's a work that needs to be done, but let me say this. There are also workers that need to get the job done. I'm not going to take the time to read it, amen, but I'll tell you, chapter 3, you can read about all the workers, the, the sheep gate, the dung gate, all the gates, amen. Hey, you know what happens? One man can't do it by himself. Right. Right. Are you hearing me, amen? Yeah. One man, listen, you will kill yourself if you're a person, amen. I think it was Spurgeon or somebody that said this, it's easier to put 10 men to work than it is to do the work of 10 men. Yeah. Your pastor can't do it by himself. He's getting old, amen. He's 60. We was talking about over lunch, talking about things that hurt, amen. You start getting over 60, friend. I mean, these things, you know, we was riding up here and I told my wife, I said, my hip's hurting, amen. You talk, talk about things that hurt when you start getting older. We laugh at that, but I'm going to tell you it's the truth. I told my wife sometimes it, it uh, smells like a nursing home at our house. Amen. <laughs> the mentholatum and everything else. Amen, Clint. You have to use to keep on going. Somebody say amen. amen. When you got pillows turned a certain way and you have to take medicine, I hate taking medicine. And I got high blood. Amen. I got type 2 diabetes. Thank God for the lisinopril metformin. Somebody say amen. Went to the doctor's past week and tried to get him to put me on them new shots, that Moderna or whatever that is. My wife, she's 
took it and has helped her, brought her A1C down, and she's lost some weight. She's always been pretty, but she, she looks good, amen. But for some reason, I may have to change doctors. He wouldn't put me on it. Somebody did, amen. <laughs> he must have thought, Brother Phil, I'm ugly and going to stay that way, amen. <laughs> Nehemiah couldn't do it by himself. One man said this, nothing gets done in God's service without servants. They had people in here that could that were goldsmiths. They had people in here that could mold iron and do everything else to help make the gates, amen. You wouldn't believe the people that's sitting around in this church tonight, Brother Doug, and you probably know most of them, amen, what they can do. No Brother Ray is a handyman. I always had a man in our church, and Brother Doug knew him, Brother Wayne Vickers. They wasn't nothing he couldn't do. He could work with wood, sheetrock, Every time I had electricity, every time Brother Thad I needed something done, I'd tell Brother Wayne he'd do it and never, he never took a red cent, never took a dime from the church. Right. You know what happened when he passed away? He didn't have no uh, life insurance or nothing. And you know what the Holy Ghost put on my heart? We paid for his funeral. We took a check down there to his wife for $10,000 to pay for his funeral. God's got people around, amen, that can, hey, get the work done. Doug can't do it by himself. Hey, it's a great work. You know why? Because it's God's work, amen. Reasons I can't come down, I'm going to say this to you, friend. I can't come down because the enemies of God. I can't come down because it's a great work. But I'm going to say this third of all, there's a danger in coming down. There's a danger in coming down. Now look, amen, back in our text in chapter 6. Look at verse number 3. He said, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? I'm going to tell you, if you get off the wall where God's got you, if you're a youth leader... I seen an old Christian, I always call him Dior. I seen him up here, amen, tonight. Hey, you leading that youth choir? Seen that little boy over there playing that piano? What a blessing. Brother Clint leading the music. Brother Ray's led music. You know what that is? That's a blessing. Those are servants. Hey man, hey, you got people. I looked around, I told Brother Ray when Tammy and Thad was up here singing, I said, those are precious people. You know what? They're faithful. They do a lot of behind the, behind the scenes work. Amen. They're, they're faithful, Brother Peter. You thank God for people like that. I promise you this, you'll miss them, amen, if they wouldn't here. When I pastored, we always tried to do a little something for Christmas, amen. For our people, we always tried to give them a little love gift. But if you knew you know where they eat at, a good place to eat, we try to give them, Brother Bob, a gift card. Just do something nice. You'll never go wrong doing nothing good for somebody. I was telling them brothers back there before the service, I think it was Matthew Henry that said this. He said this. He said if he said if you do something good for or do something mean good for somebody, he said you should forget it. But if you do something mean against somebody, they'll never forget it. Is that right or not? Amen. There's a danger coming down. What's going to happen, preacher? The work will cease. Right, right, right. Hey, if you just give up and quit, hey amen, like we tried to preach this morning, hey, if you get backslid and you turn your back on God and hey, the uh, amen, Brother Ray, and leave the church, you know what's going to happen? The work's going to cease. Right. Once Brother Doug got up here, amen, and said, well, I'm quitting. It's too overwhelming for me. Hey, I'm not able to do it. You know what's going to happen? Hey, there's no more growth. The work's going to cease. The devil would like nothing more than to stop the work of God. He's tore up many of the church. The devil's tore up. And listen, the devil always has to work through somebody. And amen. I had an evangelist tell me one time, the devil always used the weakest people in the church, amen, spiritually, to try to work through to bring down the work of God. That's why the Bible said in Ephesians 6 that we're to put on the whole armor of God, to be strong, fight against the wiles of the devil, amen, to be strong because he'll try to bring you down. It is more honorable to work than it is to talk about it. 
Amen. Heard me back when we was growing up, we used to have a saying, you know, we can just sit around and watch work for hours on hours. <laughs> but I'll tell you, when I was started wanting a car, uh, boy, first guy, when I was 16 years old, I wanted me a car. You know what my daddy said? My daddy said, son, Brother Clint, he said, if you want a car, go to work. Most kids today get it, it all give to them. Somebody say amen, roll me. I took on a part-time job. I'd get out of school at 2 o'clock, and I'd go to work, amen, from 6.30 to 8, or 8.30 or 4.30 to 8.30 on a mini shift, amen, working four hours a day. First car I ever had was a 69 Ford Torino. It had a 351 Windsor in it. cost $900. And Daddy went to the bank with me, amen, I'll never will forget it. He went to the bank with me and signed his name as a co-signer. He said, son, he said, I'm going to help you borrow the money, but you better make the payments. I think it's like $79 a month for three years, and I thought I was in debt for the rest of my life. <laughs> Somebody say amen, but I, I had to have his help. He had a good name, a good name, rather to be chosen in great riches. He had a good name, Brother Doug, and helped but borrow that money, and it got me on a good path. And thank God I've got a good credit score. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody said, you've got, have you got good credit? And one man said, yes, and everybody's got a little bit of it. Amen. <laughs> old Vance Habner said this. Now, I like old Vance Habner. He said, when all is said and done, there will be more said than done. Amen. Yeah. He said, when all is said and done, there'll be more said than done. Right. Well, thank God for them workers behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Amen. Thank God for those people. I don't even know who cleans the church, but I'm going to tell you every time we've been up here, I'm going to tell you it's cleans a whistle. Right. That don't happen by accident. Right. <laughs> hey, somebody in here has to run a vacuum cleaner. Right. Yeah. I've never seen no cobwebs or spider webs. Never seen no lights out? Somebody say amen. amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Somebody has to work. Right. Somebody's got to be willing, amen, to work. Amen. If you're going to have anything in your life, you know what you're going to do? You're going to have to work. Right. Right. Amen. Listen, we need to stay up on the wall and above this world. When Jesus was doing the greatest work, you know where his greatest work was done on the cross. When he was hanging there between two thieves, he was above the crowd. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. He was above the crowd, hanging on the cross, doing what we couldn't do. He was dying for our sin, paying for our sin debt. Amen, Brother Aaron. All the way, past, present, future. Thank God when he bowed his head on the cross, the Bible said he gave up the ghost, and he said, it is finished amen he done his work brother Clint when he was up above the crowd I'm going to tell you what if you're not careful you know what Satan will do he'll try to get you distracted yeah. well as a pastor brother Doug when I pastored I, I mean I've said people sit there and watch them pick their ears <laughs> that's better than somewhere else somebody say amen <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing else I had one man, you sit there, amen, I'd sit there a Christian, I'd be preaching, he'd be clipping his fingernails. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they was landing on the carpet. <laughs> Ain't no telling where his fingers would be. And somebody say amen. <laughs> I mean, he, right, he clipped, clipped his fingernails while I was preaching. I had one lady one time we first went to church, Brother Doug down there, and bless her heart, uh, she just loved to talk. And I was preaching one Sunday morning, Brother Ray, and I was preaching down the road, and she was turned slap around in her pew talking to the woman behind her. And I was young and dumb. You, you know what I'm saying? And I just stopped. I said, hey, ma'am, I'm preaching. <laughs> Boy, her face got red, looked like a pickle beat. Somebody say Amen. She turned around in her pew and she was our song, she was our pianist, her husband was a song leader, and it wasn't too much longer after that they felt led to leave our church. Amen. And I wasn't being mean about it. That's disrespectful. Right. A man of God was up here trying to preach, trying to do a work, trying to hey, he'd been studying and trying to give you something from his heart. Hey, and you're not paying attention. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. 
About like one man went to sleep one time, amen. The preacher told his wife, said, hey, he said, wake him up. She said, no, preacher said, you put him to sleep, you wake him up, amen. <laughs> amen. Matthew chapter 27, verse 42, the Bible said this, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down off this cross, and we will believe him. That thief on the left hand ended up in hell. But I'll tell you, I believe the thief on the right hand, that's the power side, amen. He said, we deserve what we get. He said, we should be here. Jesus looked at him, amen. And he recognized Jesus was the Christ. And Jesus looked at him, amen. He didn't even get baptized. Hey, Jesus looked at him. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. Got saved in his dying breath, in his dying hour. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Right. Somebody had to labor for y'all to be here. Right. I mean, it's beautiful. The whole building's beautiful. It's stamped concrete in the front. I mean, it's a beautiful building. It's pretty, amen. Hey, somebody had to put the work in. Work to be done, amen. And boy, God, thank God for the workers, amen. I appreciate the work. Hey, if you come down, you know what's going to happen? The work's going to cease. Number two, if you're not careful, you'll leave the work. Notice what he said in verse three. He said, so that I cannot come down and the work cease while I, while, whilst I leave it. The enemies of God was trying to get him to leave the work of God. Now, I want to say this to you, friend. If God tells you to leave, you need to leave. But I'm going to tell you, if God don't tell you to leave, just stay put. Don't let the enemies run you off. Don't let the devil run you off, amen. Don't, don't let him run you off. If God ever tells you to leave, I had, I had a preacher tell me this one time. He said, if God ever tells you something, he said, you, it'll be a clear word from God and it will remove all doubt. Whenever you have to start going to other people and start asking things, if there's any doubt, don't do it. Right. Amen. 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 I want to say this to you, friend, and I'll close with this. There's a danger of coming down. The work will cease. You'll leave the work. And then if you're not careful, you'll lose the burden for the work. What if Nehemiah, Brother Doug, would have lost a burden for the work? Never got done. This man had a burden. He had a burden to do God's work. One man said the greatest burden in the, in the world is that we don't have a burden. These people in his church has got a burden for souls. Got a burden, all them Christmas cards. and Boy, we used to do that at church. I miss that stuff. I mean, boy, when you get out of the saddle, you, you miss that stuff, amen. amen. Losing the burden. And I'll tell you, the enemy came after Nehemiah five times. Look at verse number five. Then sent Sanballat and his servant unto me in the manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. You know what the enemy, Brother Doug, he'll keep on coming at you. He's relentless. Galatians 6, 9, amen. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Folks, we haven't got the finish line yet. Right. Right. Just keep on serving. Amen. Keep on serving. Amen. The enemy will even try to fabricate lies. Amen. Yeah. Verses 5 through 8, we'll not take time to read that, but he'll fabricate lies to try to destroy the work of God, right. try to get the work of God to cease. Amen. But I don't tell you the problem wasn't Nehemiah. I want to tell you what, it was Sanballat and Geshem, amen, and Tobiah. It was those that were doing uh, God's work wrong. They were hindering the work of God. Boy, Nehemiah prayed in verse number 9, Oh God, strengthen my hand. I want to say this. It is impossible to do the work of God without God's help. John 15, 5. Amen. Jesus said this. He said, for without me, ye can do nothing. You know what Paul said in Philippians 4, 13? He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. 
We can boy, we just look to the Lord. Listen to what Paul said about his enemies. 2 Timothy 4, 14, he said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord will reward him according to his works. God knows what's going on. 1 John 5, 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.